This spectacular coastline is packed with amazing animals, both in and out of the water. And we're going to take you on a journey to meet the very best of California's marine wildlife. In the dead of night, the researchers are fishing for monsters from the deep. What will they find? But now, we're heading off to a strange and mysterious world. Out beyond Monterey Bay, the seabed plunges to the bottom of a vast underwater canyon, 3,000 meters deep. Bizarre creatures live here, many still new to science. They dwell in the darkness of the abyss. But each night, countless millions of creatures migrate upward to feed in shallower waters. One is the prickly shark, so-called because its skin is strangely rough. Marine biologist Cindy Dawson is one of the few people in the world to study this mysterious predator. What's fascinating about the prickly shark to me is that um, there's just n hardly anything known about this animal. It was only described as a unique species in 1930, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that long ago. There's a whole group of different animals that are more active at night, and this shark turns out to be one of those. So the best time to find them is after dark. In order to discover more about them, Cindy and a team from Moss Landing Marine Labs are heading out to catch a prickly shark. But over the submarine canyon is a treacherous place to be in the pitch black. And skipper John Douglas needs to keep his wits about him. You know, I generally know exactly where I am, but knowing what else is out there is the, is the bigger challenge. The riskiest thing is just uh, simply the fact that we have uh, a lot of people in a small space, kind of all the work that we do is over the side of the boat. There's definitely a little more risk with doing things over the side at night as opposed to during the day because if something were to happen, somebody was to go over the side, it would be a little more difficult to locate. When they're over deep water, the crew start fishing. The line and hooks need to be very strong because prickly sharks can be huge, up to four meters long. We're just putting it out there and, and hoping for the best, hoping for prickly sharks. Generally, we've had pretty good luck, but um, that's the other interesting thing about being out here at night. You never know. Uh, we could get something we've never caught before. And it's not long before they have a bite. There's something on the line, and we'll be back later to find out what. In the dead of night, a team of researchers are out to find a mysterious creature from the depths of Monterey Bay. They've put out baited lines to catch a prickly shark. Now, biologist Cindy Dawson has got a bite on her fishing line. No shark, but uh, something almost as scary. It's a kind of starfish that's gone for the baited hook. These guys are very, very voracious predators and they will find anything along the bottom and uh, get right on it. And so the difficulty is they actually extrude their stomach around the item they're eating. So what Scott's doing right now is he's actually uh, kind of fighting, fighting with the sea star to pull it out of his stomach without hurting it. Sea stars usually eat shellfish, but some will go for carrion too. These are actually the arms of the sea star, and each one of these little tube feet have the ability to kind of move, and they move them in unison to kind of scurry along the bottom. Yeah, I think it's time to let it go. The sea star goes back unharmed, and the crew return to their fishing. Now there's another bite. It's something bigger, much, much bigger. Pull, pull, pull. Everybody up. Here it is. Their luck is in. It's a prickly shark. 
He's hooked good. We're okay. Open the stretchers wide as you can. The shark needs to be maneuvered onto a stretcher to keep it and the team safe. They're not man-eaters, but they could still bite. This one is a young male, about two meters long. It's very rare to get a close look at a prickly shark. They normally live deep below in the submarine canyon, feeding on other sharks, fish, and squid. The first thing to do is to take a skin sample. This will be sent away for a full DNA analysis. The skin is uh, rougher than sandpaper, um, more almost like steel wool. Uh, that's where it gets its name, prickly shark. No one knows why their skin is so rough. That's just one of the many mysteries that surround this shark. Next, Cindy attaches an ID tag. This is to ensure that if he's caught again, he won't be counted twice. That done, the shark is free to go. Okay, drop the stretcher. All right, let's let it go. Okay, down. Okay, there it goes. It's been a successful night. It's a great feeling. Uh, you never know. You go out fishing and you can fish and fish and fish and not catch anything. So catching a little male today was great. So that just adds more data to the database to get an idea that there are probably quite a few of these animals that live in this relatively small area at the head of the canyon. There's still a lot yet to be discovered about the mysterious deep. But tonight, they've learned a little more about one of its strangest creatures.